and bang, I've actually exhausted the PGA allocation. Anyone that's ever written an application that gets multiple rows from the database is generally familiar with the cliche of row by row equals slow by slow. Fetching one row at a time to get multiple rows from the database is generally very inefficient and leads to performance issues. Just to demonstrate that, I'll do a demo here. I've got a table called T1. It's got a stack of rows and I'll write a little peel SQL routine using what I would call the uh, old style syntax that is explicitly declaring the cursor so I have control over the fetch size and I'm just going to do a fetch of one row at a time until I've exhausted all the rows from T1. By the magic of YouTube, we can speed up that process. And there we go, 23 seconds to exhaust all the rows in that result set. Most people are familiar with the concept of if you want to get performance benefits when you're fetching rows, you want to fetch multiple rows with a single fetch command. If that concept is new to you, you're in for a treat this video. But for many of us, we know that. The question is, what should that fetch size be? So let's explore that for the rest of these demos. I'll augment my peel SQL routine to have an array defined now so I can get multiple rows with a single fetch. And the rest of it is really just changing the limit clause to see how many rows I'm gonna get at once. I'm just gonna add 10 rows here, a simple change up from one row, and we'll give it a run. And we can see we've dramatically improved performance. We've come down from 23 seconds down to six seconds. That's really good. But of course, the moment you see something like that, you start to think, well, how hard can I push this? So let's now run the demo again and start cranking up that fetch size. Now I've changed my array fetch size to being 50 rows at a time. I give that a run and we can see four seconds now. So I've gone from 23 to six down to four. It's looking pretty good. So Let's keep on chugging. If I bump up my fetch size to 100 rows, things keep getting better and better. Now I'm down to just over three and a half seconds. So let's push it even harder. Bumping up to 1,000 gets me 3.3 seconds. It looks like there's no end to the benefits you can get. As long as I keep doing less fetch trips to the database, I'm going to get better and better performance. Let's go again. At 10,000 now, I'm down to 3.2 seconds. That's almost, what, eight? Eight times better than the original row by row. I'm getting some fantastic benefits here. So I might as well push on. I know my table has got more than a million rows. It's got eight million rows. So let's get them a million rows at a time. And here's where we start to get an inclination that maybe we can't push this ad infinitum. Even though I'm using a bigger fetch size, it took 4.1 seconds. That's slower than any of the results we had for smaller fetch sizes. So what's going on. Perhaps the easiest way to describe what's going on is to remove the limits altogether and try fetch the entire set with a single fetch call. I set it going, it's certainly taking a while, and bang, I've actually exhausted the PGA allocation or some threshold that the database has set for this session. I'm not allowed to consume that much memory. And that's the key thing here. When you're doing huge fetches, all that data you fetched has to go somewhere. And in this case, it's going into database memory because I'm doing it all in Peel SQL. If you're doing this in Java or a application somewhere on a middle tier, then that middle tier also has to be able to accommodate all that information coming back in a single fetch call. Let's explore how much memory is going to be used for some of these values. In a brand new session, so I've cleared out all my existing stat counters for a session, I'm going to do a bulk collect of a million like we saw before, it took about four seconds. Now that that's run, I'm now gonna check what my session stats are for memory consumption. And you can see here, I burned about 500 megabytes of memory just to do that huge bulk collect. Now, I don't care how big your server is, 500 megs of memory doesn't seem like much, but if you've got 100, 200, 1,000 sessions all connected to your database, no server is gonna be able to handle that. That's insane amounts of memory. So we saw that the response times had a, a diminishing value of returns here. We very rapidly jumped down to about three and a half, four seconds, but then we had to work very hard to squeeze more out. And as you can see, if you push too hard, you either will collapse your session altogether, or you're going to consume gob loads of memory, which is going to reduce the scalability of your applications and ultimately your server. So there is probably a sweet spot in there. 
And for me, I think the sweet spot when you're doing Peel SQL coding, i.e. processing data on the database, is to use the default looping construct. If I look at this example here, simply by doing for i in and then SQL, then by default, we will compile that with a batch size of 100. The cool thing here is it's smaller code, it's simpler code. I didn't have to write the fetch and the bulk collect, all that kind of stuff. I simply looped around some rows and the database did 100 rows at a time. That's gonna be very, very close to optimal for the vast majority of situations. There is one scenario though that you'll need to be careful of, and that is when you're fetching data across a network because obviously the number of trips across the network can have a dramatic impact on performance if the network latency is high. To simulate that, I've created a remote database link here to one of the other databases on my home Wi-Fi network. We can be rest assured that my home Wi-Fi is hardly state of the art. Here's a very similar Peel SQL block. This time I'm gonna be doing batch fetches of size 50 to a remote database. You would think an array size of 50 should be perfectly reasonable, but you can see here once again by the magic of YouTube, it took 35 seconds to get that data. A much larger performance degradation from the local database because now I'm doing network trips and that's going to have a cost. So in this case, let's bump up the array size to 100. The default I said is probably gonna be optimal for many situations and see what the result is. I did get a significant improvement, I'm down to 24 seconds, but as we saw, we would hope to be able to get better performance from that, assuming we do less trips across the network. So network trips is going to play a part in determining what kind of batch size you want to use. Now I'll bump up the array size to 1000, and I get a massive jump in performance. I've come all the way down from 24 seconds down to seven seconds now. I'm starting to get a performance benefit sort of similar to what I was getting on the local database. So my Wi-Fi network probably isn't so bad, it's just not so good in terms of latency for hops. Finally, let's crank it all the way up to 10,000 and you can see I got the performance down to three and a half seconds, almost comparable with the local database speed here. So this is all part of the balancing act you have to walk when you're fetching data. If I'm across a network, then the performance of the network in terms of its bandwidth and also its latency is going to play a significant role in terms of working out what the best batch size is. But even with that considered, it's not always just about reducing the response time because once I start cranking those batch sizes up, I need to make sure that the memory consumption on either my database or my client application, if I'm dragging information into a client application, is going to be able to manage. But either way, when it comes to choosing a batch size, for me, in Peel SQL, I'll generally go with the default, 100. If I'm going with an application, I'll take a look at my network performance, my network latency, and decide from there how hard I can push that array size without getting into memory hassles. <laughs>